today is Friday! Yay! So this had physical education, also known as P. What about what Suri had there? She's a unicorn. Suri, are you a unicorn? Yeah. Or something you had to fix it? No. Put a smile on that face. You good boy? Yeah, man. Good morning. So, we're gonna drop these ducklings to school and then. Take a ride. Girls, well, you feel we should go today? Hmm. Without you all. Yeah, Lupino. Lupino? That's yes. exactly why I was going what to think? Say. Yeah, Lupino is a man good. Yeah, she make a real good suggestion there. I, I didn't even know, you know. I make that. I didn't even know Sadie knew about Lupino. We have to fix Sadie, that unicorn I'm horn. I to make that to myself. Hey! Wait, I want to help you fix it. Should no. Okay. <gasps> so you going to school just on Sunday? Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Okay, Sadie. Because you suggested it, we're going to Lopino, okay? Okay. Yeah, okay? I agree with that one. Hey, and let me give you a quick little history. You see way up inside that Cora? Yeah. Cora, back in its time, was one of the largest villages. It, there was in Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. There was a population of about 1,800 people. They had shops, barber shops. A real nice community with, you know. station. Yeah. Right? But then, um, the government wanted to construct a dam. Right? And in, in the Quora Valley itself. In the Quora itself. Valley itself. Because the valley was... The valley, valley, like like the perfect reservoir. Yeah, Cora Valley was actually a perfect valley in every sense, and therefore very conducive, in theory, for building a dam. So what ended up happening now is that, of course, everybody had to evacuate, and a lot of people from Cora went over the mountain and went to Lopino. Yes. So now, where are we going today in Lopino? You'll find that a lot of those people were originally from Cora, mm -hmm. right? Some went to Lafayette, some went to Las Cuevas, St. Joseph. St. Joseph, but the majority went to Co um, to Lopino. There is still a trail from Cora that leads over the mountains into Lopino. The, bi the bike can make that? We need a trail bike for that. Okay. But that will be the exact trail that the people would have used to relocate. Yeah. Actually, the church, the church which was the last building to be demolished, right? A lot of things from that church went over to La Pastora. I think it's La Pastora Divina. La Divina Pastora. La Divina Pastora, right? They carry the name of the church also. So. Hopefully, once we have enough time, we'll be able to get to the church also. You all enjoy that history lesson? Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it very much, actually. Including the part that they didn't let the Bible and things from the church just get buried in the soil. Yeah, very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel a little hungry. I save my belly for something nice, something wholesome. Like a like a, a whole wheat sada and a body or something boy. You know it together? In our place after um Dinsley Junction. You can sit on it there? Yes. They have sada roti and body and stuff. All kind of takaris. Talkari boy. Talkari. Tell me which is the proper way to pronounce it. Takari or talkari or choka. Some people just call each talkari dish choka. So like if you're curry a body, you say body choka. Fry alu choka. Fry alu choka. Take that corner very wide. Next time, pull more on the side. 
Born this side, born this side. Don't take the corner so, so wide. Right, we went and switch. In three, two, one. There we go. I just have to show all the mountains behind me. Feeling good? Boss. Let's go. Hug up time. <laughs> He's a real gentleman. Yeah, man. Good morning, good morning. Look at, they have everything. Let me see, let me see. Karaili, one of my favorites. Egg. I feel like I could take a little bit of everything, boy. Aha, uh -huh, they had his stew liver. And the body. I, I don't know what to choose. I don't know what to choose. I want a little bit of everything. You serious? We're getting it in Sahari Leaf, boy. Yeah, boy. Woo. So, yeah, if I want more, go ask for more. Yes, thank you. It's soft, it's raw, it's so pliable, and inside it's so spongy, and it's perfect for sucking up the sauce. So take a look at this pepper, body, a little bit of the liver, and you just eat. Just what we have to order. I like to eat a little bit of everything. I can have a salt fish on this plate now. I want to be a little closer to you. Are you ready to dip in my pumpkin? Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, let me tell you. The booty is very soft and tender. The right amount of salt and aromatic. I've seen some garlic pieces floating around in the air and that just sealed the deal for me because I love saltery with plenty of garlic in it. The liver, perfect. Yeah. That stew flavor is really powering for you. Know, you know sometimes it gets a stew and you're not really tasting the classic Trini stew flavor in it. Sometimes no. too sweet, sometimes too bitter. Perfect balance. Well seasoned. The liver is very tender. It's not chewy. And in a fresh. You can tell it wash this real good. And the pepper, I'm going back for some more. I saved my belly for this food, you know. Me and eat since yesterday evening. So I could eat this salad this morning, you know. No, the food is really good. Really, really good. Mm. Nice service too. Mm -hmm. Taking me right back to mommy house. I nearly called the girl ma. Yeah. Almost. Mm. Yes, boy. We can ride our bike to go up the middle. You know? Yeah, I can ride on this bed. <laughs> A hammer. A hammer, boy. Okay, bye. bye. Eastern Main Road. If you're headed east, it's after Dinsley Junction. If you're headed west, it's a little before Dinsley Junction. You can't miss it. Nice big sign. Yeah, if you're heading east, it's on your left. And if you're heading west, it's on your right. So we're on our Rupert Junction. Still had an east. If you turn right, you head into the airport. That direction is gonna take you to the airport. Alright, the sign is missing, but this is the Pino Road. Alright?
So I stopped for a minute along the way because there are some trees that I really want to show you. If you look in the background, you'll see a variety of trees. And I'll just point out a couple to you. Now we are in Lope, you know, we are in the Northern Range. So we are going to be careful, have to look out for snakes, be very cautious. So take a look at this tree. The top of the tree has been, uh, I don't know, decapitated. The, the top of the tree is missing, but you can see there are still some vines clinging to it. And they're very much alive. Shadow Benny is so pretty, eh? That is a termite's nest. This tree is a cocoa tree, all right? Take a look at the leaves. All right, look at the way it grows. And something that is unique about the cocoa tree is that, see, see you have some small ones here. These guys didn't make it, so sad. The cocoa fruit actually grows off of the trunk of the tree. So you see? Nice little stream flowing here. I could well imagine. Look at these cylinders underneath there. I could well imagine that when rain falls, what happens? And this is a breadfruit tree. All right. These are what the fallen leaves look like. To give you an up close. There's some young ones up there. Just had to show you all another termite's nest. <laughs> Hope you've seen it. Taking that little extra walk because I couldn't let this opportunity escape. The king of termite nests. Look at that fella. Look at the size of that fella. This guy is probably three feet tall in length. See the size of that fella, boy. What's that? Termite. So we wouldn't go beyond a certain point, all right? Because it's private. So we're going to honor the signs because there's a, it says private bridge and then the sign for the city box says no trespassing private property. But there's enough beauty to soak in from here. We have a truck here, we could use the truck. We could use the truck, okay. Mm -hmm. These are actually Pomerac plants. Would these grow if we planted them? Yes. This is a cocoa pod. Somebody was foraging and crack it in half, right?
I don't know about you, eh, but I always felt like most on our wall was a beautiful thing to see. Pretty little church boy. The St. Philip's Anglican Church. So this is this is what we were talking about earlier, alright? I'll just take you up to the sign. Alright. Alright. So you see just over that mountain ridge there, when you go over there, you're gonna meet Cora. So yes, this is one of the most famous sites when you're coming up to Lopino. You see the Lopino house in the background there. Yeah, I'll take you closer, don't worry. But I just want to give you... But I... I just want to give you as panoramic a view as I could from this angle. Is that about eight years I ain't come here? Or? About eight or nine years I didn't come. I don't think I even was pregnant. It's still beautiful, eh? Lopin, the famous Lopino bridge that leads to the Lopino house. It's a beautifully constructed bridge though, eh? Look at all the different species of things hanging from these trees and everybody just coexisting real nice. There's a corn bird up above. From Chutney to Parang. You are so talented. Alright, he's playing a quattro. This is a violin. Another quattro. A banjo. And maracas. Or shak shaks. Let me take in them fellas' faces. Yep. That one in the back, they looking like he, he waiting for a pastel or something. This one really into it. I think he wanted to be in front, but they put him in the back. And this one laughing at him because he, he wanted to is come in front. Again, or the, I think this man's name is Lopez. Lopez? Yeah. Yeah, man. All right, fellas. We go check all the back. I mean, it has seen better days, but Still beautiful. it is as beautiful now as it was back then. Now, let me tell you something about history. History is something that will forever remain beautiful and this is what is happening with the Lopino house here. Even though there aren't as many visitors as in the previous years, if you look at this house, even standing here, there is such a nostalgic feel, an immediate calm just descends upon you. The sounds around, the insects, the birds chirping, the flowers 
greenery, shrubs, dogs barking in the distance. Personally, I think it's even more beautiful now. Snake. There's a snake. It's not living. What kind of snake is this? A mappy pee? Yeah. This is a mappy pee. For sure, for sure. For a coral snake. This one is a baby What's it is on? Where the head is, boy? Where is the head? I want to see if he's dead smiling or he's dead sad. <laughs> But this looking like more than one inside here. Yeah. I said that there's a mud oven three back. I'm gonna check it out. Speak a bread one time. Yeah, I'm gonna take specs in here. I'll build one for me. <laughs> yeah, mud, mud oven is the real flick now. Mm. This is. A really, really beautiful mud oven. You can tell it hasn't been in use for a while, but I bet it's still functional because all you need to do is just put some fuel inside there, clean it out, put some fuel, and start baking. Now, the question might arise as to why such a beautiful piece of history would have been left to deteriorate and to come to this condition but have no fear we have learned that plants are in effect to restore the buildings to restore the facility and have it up and running once again as a tourist attraction so we'll keep you updated Find this little fella. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, boy. And the name of that flower came up as the Peach Angels Trumpets. There's also a scientific name, but I can't pronounce it. <laughs> I'll tie up a tongue bad. <laughs> we have a nice little sitting area here. <laughs> Sana's workshop. You could construct these things. Yeah, yeah, the batching, so for me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. This is a jail, but it's being used as a um as an office right now and it's holding all sorts of different important artifacts in here, just keeping them safe. And this is the cocoa house. So if you look right there you're gonna see a wheel and there are several wheels along the length there which indicates the sliding roof which is what they would have retracted when they needed to put the cocos to sun out a wonderful piece of architecture can i feel like i'm going right back in time here you know boy this is like gold for me you want to come back for me? Yeah, man. <laughs> Look at this. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Take a look at this. Take a look at this, guys. All right. So let me show all you, right? From here, Toko is 45 kilometers in that direction. Diego Martin, 24 kilometers that direction. Separia, 65 kilometers. I'll take a little Separia one day and blanch your shares, right? Now look at this interesting thing. It's a map of Trinidad. It's a map of Trinidad. And you see that area where the pole is in? Well, that is where we are. All right, so what I'm trying to say, I get so excited, I'll mix up my words, right? This pole is implanted in where Lopino is. So we are standing where that pole is right now in Trinidad. You know they say when you have like the flu or your immune system needs a little building up. Covers are perfect. Mm -hmm. You can eat them just as is. 
for when you can make juice. I have a video making guava juice. I'll put the link in the description below. Mm. So, this is the Lopino Public Cemetery. You know, and they're working on cleaning out the area. As you could see. So, these are the tombs of the Count Lopino family. Just a little piece of history to share with you all. They get a nice corner spot, boy. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Don't have much zoom, but this is the best I can do. So you see the statue there? La Divina Pastora. Boy, let's go. What we found was that Lopino is a treasure chest of sites and information and we just didn't have enough time to capture everything we wanted to so we'll have to make a part two all right and i met some people up there when we're going up we're going to plan better so that we could bring you some accurate information and just delve a little deeper into history and bring you some facts all right so thank you once again for going on this ride with us and until next time be happy be safe Leave some comments and probably let us know where you think we should write to next. <laughs>